Well, House uh, lawmakers set to convene a new round of hearings in the Benghazi attack following a report from Oversight Committee Republicans that slams the State Department's so-called independent investigation. My next guest represents one of the Benghazi whistleblowers, and joining us now is Victoria Toinsek. She's attorney for Gregory Hicks, former deputy uh, chief of mission in Libya. She's also a former chief counsel for the Senate Intelligence Committee. Victoria, good to have you with us. It's uh, good to be back, Lou. Let, let's start with uh, tomorrow. We're going to get a sense of the authors of the ARB that uh, you have taken such issue with. Uh, and do you expect much to come from that House Oversight uh, Committee hearing? Will there be a resolution of the issues that you uh, are, are most concerned about? Well, I hope that there is a, a lot revealed. Uh, I have been talking about this for about four or five months, and the mainstream media is still reluctant to pick it up. But the process that was used, Lou, is just an insult to any of us who have really conducted a, an independent investigation of any issue. That they didn't, no one was under oath. There was no stenographer. There were only note takers. The witnesses who were note takers just decided, you know, what they they thought was important. The witnesses were never allowed to re, to review those notes to see if they were accurately portrayed. Nobody was allowed to review the draft report, and most of the people have not been allowed to even view the classified report, including the four people who were dismissed. And we should and point that's out those where their are the allegations people. were. We should point out those are the people that the State Department uh, permitted to be interviewed. Uh, the ARB did not even take into consideration the survivors of the attack, correct? Oh, and, and they, my husband also represents one of the whistleblowers, Mark Thompson, and he's in charge of coordinating any uh, response, military response to a terrorism attack or hostage taking. He was kept out of every single meeting that night. He was not allowed to go to anything or to be, participate in any decisions. He was told, the decision's already been made, you're out of here. And he was not interviewed, notwithstanding the fact that he asked to be. And uh, as one of those who would be responsible and in the chain of command, it's remarkable that that is the case. But of course, Secretary of State Clinton also was not, uh, uh, not imposed upon by the, the uh, ARB. Uh, and. And the idea that we are looking at an investigation that has come to a conclusion without evidence, without record, uh, without uh, validation, or at least the assertion of truth on uh, taking an oath for, for the witnesses, uh, this is appalling on every level. And, and where is the outrage? Well, yeah, well, let me, let me just say one thing about Hillary Clinton and why I think she was not interviewed. Because my client, when he was being interviewed by the ARB, told the board, including Pickering, that the reason the ambassador was in Benghazi was because Hillary Clinton, on the day she swore him in, said she wanted him to make it a priority to make Benghazi a permanent outpost. And, and he had to do it before September 30th, and he couldn't do it until September because of other commitments. He had to do it before September 30th. He had to get a report in. So that's why he had to go there in Why did September. the IRB ignore your client's statements and the reason that Christopher Stevens, the ambassador, was there. I hope that Pickering is asked that question repeatedly because my client told them that and they not only did they not put that in, they put in a statement, a self-serving statement in that report that said that the ambassador went there independently that was the word, independently, of Washington. When my client says they had been coordinating this trip with Washington for three weeks since about August 22nd when the ambassador returned from Europe. Victoria, it's an outright. And, and here's my concern also, real, Lou. Real I have talked to a number of journalists lately who have, to major media, who have said stories are being spiked because their organizations are fearful of leak investigations by this administration. If, if it what is not clear, allowed? if it what is not clear now to all that much of the national media is both liberal and complicit in uh, in following this administration's uh, uh, dicta and what they perceive to be its interest, uh, I don't know what more can be but said. But it's also they're fearful of leak investigations. This administration has chilled the freedom of the press, and we well, need not to do all something together. about it. Not all together, Victoria. 
We appreciate you being with us, and we will uh, continue to explore our rights on, under that First Amendment. Okay. Victoria Tonson, thanks. Good to talk with you.